Hi guys, just, um, thank you. As you just heard, I'm Mark Spevick, the head of 3D at Escape Studios. Um, and I've been kindly asked to come and do a talk today by Hewlett Packard, particularly on education and the future of digital creativity, or how education um, is driven by sort of technology, particularly in the visual effects industry. I'm just an, an artist that's worked my way through the industry, supervised and trained a few people. I've got about 20 odd years in the industry. I started off as a model maker, doing the physical effects, and then the industry started, this was sort of in the late 80s, early 90s, and the industry started to change a lot um, into the digital, and rather than get left behind, I thought I'd take a few steps back and get a job as a runner, because these were the only kind of opportunities you had back then. And I worked for Terry Gilliam's company, Peerless, and learnt my way through, because trying to get access to the computers back then, as we'll, as we'll discuss, was quite tricky. So I worked my way up, worked at MPC, Dignag, and various big facilities, and then found my way at Escape Studios. Um, and I've been there sort of for, the, for the last sort of five years. Very quickly, I became head of department there, running the courses and helping define what Escape Studios is today. We've seen a huge expansion of this digital effects industry. You know, back in the 80s, there weren't many films, and now suddenly every film's got CGI in it, which is a wonderful thing. It's all very exciting for us as artists. And on the back of that, as you can see in the movies, there's a huge creative explosion as well. You know, we're creating things in the films that you couldn't have seen 20, 30 years ago. It was impossible. And in the industry, we're like, we can buy a workstation for three grand. Plus also, interestingly, NVIDIA and other GPUs for the games industry were maturing. And the reason why people bought SGIs was for the graphics capabilities. But since cheap gaming cards were coming on and cheap PCs, the software would run relatively well on those. And as a result, Silicon Graphics didn't survive. They couldn't sell those heavy workstations. And it was great news for us in the industry, because suddenly, instead of paying 80 grand for a seat, now we're paying three grand for a seat. Suddenly, you can have 10 10 times more seats. People could actually afford this stuff and learn at home, which was amazing. You could do Hollywood effects at home in 97, 98 for quite a reasonable cost. And this is when, the, the obviously, the ex industry completely scaled up and expanded. You know, facilities were able to employ 10 times more people. A lot more people were able to access the, the tools. And the other interesting thing is a lot more software tools were being written around that time, so they didn't need high levels of computing knowledge to do stuff. They were using graphic interfaces to free up their creativity. And this is why we have that explosion towards the late 90s and into the 2000s and the industry as it is today. And it keeps going on like that, expanding and expanding with more tools, making our job easier and quicker with what we do. So it's quite interesting. Um, so that's just a little recap of um, basically what I've just said. So the more important thing is, you know, this period around the late 90s when hardware and software became a lot cheaper, it made the tool, you know, it made tools appear for us and therefore the techniques and the things that we do much more accessible to, I like to call them normal people, people like us that could go out there, look online and read stuff. Um, so yeah, the conclusion is really, um, who knows what might happen in the future? You know, it, it is so transient. It's not like banking where they're doing the same thing for the last 20, 30 years. We're not, we're not even doing the same thing we did two years ago. <laughs> Who knows how it changes? That's a bit tricky when you're writing a three-year course, obviously, because things change while you're teaching it. But this is why we want to look retrospectively and do things correct, distill out what are those fundamental key skills that don't really change over time, what are the skills that do change, you know, the soft, the hard, and try and develop a person by the end of it, hopefully, that can keep up with the pace of the change of industry. You know, they do have the ability to learn new software skills and techniques. You know, they're not frightened to do that. You know, they have the resourcefulness and willingness to keep up with this. They've got to be excited by it. You can't have someone that goes, oh, I'm not learning a new software, because they just won't keep up with the pace, you know. And all of that is absolutely important and, you know, the and comes down to a lot of us having a good, or as educators, having a very, very good dialogue with industry. Without that two-way dialogue, we can't, be sure of you know the kind of fundamental skills or particularly at that point in time the hard skills you know the software skills that they might need so having good industry um, dialogue lets us know you know that we do need a Meyer op this year maybe next year it'll be houdini op whatever so we can tailor those parts of the course to give them the hard skills at the end but the majority of the course will be the soft or the fundamental skills that will carry them through the future being sustainable. You know, we want people that are excited, enthused, and hopefully um, you can hold down careers as this crazy industry does evolve and change, really. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Cheers, guys.